Hello everybody, it's Brian Esslick here from How To Automotive. Today I got a 2007 Honda Ridgeline and we're going to do the rear brakes and I'm going to walk you through the process of that. We're going to machine the rotors and then replace the pads. So we're going to start by supporting the vehicle in a lift or on jack stands if you're doing it at home and take a 22 millimeter socket, remove the, wheel, the lug nuts and we'll remove the rear wheels. As you can see by the, the lining is worn out, it's really thin. So what we're going to do is remove the caliper. So we're going to have to Put a 17 millimeter wrench here and remove the, the bolt here. You have to back it up because when you crack this free, it'll it'll try to spin. So back this up, take the bolt off here, on the top and bottom, and take the caliper off and flip it off, and then we're gonna measure the rotor to make sure we have enough to uh, turn it. So after removing the two bolts from the top and bottom, I just took the caliper and flipped it out, set it on top of the, um, the suspension here, and uh, that way it doesn't put any stress on the brake cable. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and remove the uh, worn out brake pads here like so. And we're going to get our micrometer out. And we're going to measure the, uh, the thickness and check it. And check to make sure it's within specs to, to machine it. And we're also going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So if this is out of spec and one side is in spec, it's recommended that you replace them both in pairs. And uh, that way you don't have one that's thick and one's thin and one wears out prematurely or, or warps in the middle of its life cycle. It's just better to do it in pairs, that way you don't have any problems. And, and uh, So we're going to measure that now. So if they both measure out fine, you can machine them both. And, uh, okay, so we're going to take our caliper mark, mic and run it in until it just touches. And see if, if you see the reading, it's 0 .390. So we're going to take this off, turn the rotor, and measure it in a couple spots, as deep and as far back as we can in a couple spots to get an accurate reading and make sure there's no warped areas. And as you can see, it's actually a little thicker here. And we're going to spin the rotor itself, we'll take it all the way off, spin the rotor, measure it in a couple spots around the, around the rotor, and we'll do that on both sides. So. 0 0.391, 3.90 is the smallest one I have. So we're going to look up the specs in our, our Bendex brake book here that I, I got from, from our part supplier. And um, the ridge line, this is 2007, so we're going to look it up. And it says here ridge line, rear brakes, minimum, the minimum uh, discard is at, at, where is it at? 2007 ridge line is at is at 0.354 so we have almost 50, uh, 40 thousandths to play with here so there's plenty of room to machine these rotors if we take a light cut off so now we need to remove this rotor to get it on the brake lathe and machine it so to do that we're going to remove the, the caliper cage here by removing the two bolts on the back which have already loosened up you can see now to get honda rotors off in general you're going to need an impact screwdriver they're pretty much almost impossible to get these screws out right here to hold the rotor on without an impact screwdriver on Honda's in particular. So what you're gonna do is put your impact screwdriver in, find the proper bit that fits it, put it in, and you're gonna strike it in the rear with a hammer and twist it at the same time. I had already done it with this one, so then you'll break the, um, the screw free. So I recommend getting a quality one because on Honda ones you can break the bits all the time. I warranty these bits probably once a week. Now that you got the screw out, there's like a 90% chance the rotor will not come off when you try to get it off. So one of the tricks to getting it off is you take an 8mm by 125 thread bolt. And Hondas always have a little screw in them. And uh, well, if they have factory rotors, on some of the Chinese rotors may not have this one. So you would screw it in and you would take a little and run it in like that there's another one on the opposite side I'm going to try to uh, do it equally you can also just get two bolts and do it back and forth it's probably quicker that way so you get it off the hub like so and now that it's uh, crack free you can, you can work it off you don't want to over do it too much and cock it too much because there is an emergency brake shoe in here and you don't want to break the uh, hardware holding the emergency brake on so you do a little bit on this side a little bit on this side and get it and once you break it free then you should be able to walk it off 
if you can't walk it off, it, it, it won't come off because it's stuck on the shoe, you can take this uh, rubber plug out and unadjust the adjuster screw if, you, if it's needed. So this is the emergency brake shoes I was telling you about. And this is the kit, so like I said, if you do it talk too much, what I'll do is I'll grab the back of it and pull it, and it can break the hardware kit. And uh, this is the adjuster screw, so you can adjust it in or out to uh, expand it to tighten up your brake or loosen up your brake, depending if you're trying to get the rotor off or trying to adjust your brake. And uh, when we put it back together, I'll show you how to check your brake. Okay, our next step is to set it up on the brake lathe. Um, I'll probably save the brake lathe set up for another, or another video. But uh, for, for now, if you don't have a, a brake lathe, you can take it down to your automotive, like your local shop, and have them turn machine the rotors for you. But uh, it's worth taking them down to get them machined. So I'm going to get these going and then uh, So while the rotors are machining on the uh, brake lathe, what I like to do is keep busy and do a little prep work. So I'm going to go ahead and push the, cal uh, the pistons back into the caliper. I'm going to use my uh, tool here. It's like a little cocking gun. You just kind of squeeze it and it pushes it in. But if you don't have this, a C-clamp or a large pair of channel locks, and, and you can do it. Um, I do it without opening the bleeder screw and just push the piston in what it does is pushes the fluid back up into the master cylinder um, there's some thoughts on that the pros and cons of doing it that way i have never had any problems with doing it that way the way if you open the bleeder screw you'll have to bleed the brake after you're done if you do it my way where you just push the piston back in just do it in a slow manner and, and don't force anything um, you won't have to bleed the brake after you're done the only thing you'll have to do is pump the brake pedal uh, uh, before you test drive it. So you just push the piston in so it's flush like so, and that's as far as they go, and that's it. Next is we're gonna uh, take the slide pins out of the uh, cage, cage here. So you're gonna take these out. See how that was like, kind of stiff, it didn't want really to move. So, so what we're gonna do is pop the boot off right here and pull these pins out and we're gonna lubricate these. So I just finished cutting my first rotor and I'm re-miking the rotor after I cut it to double check that I didn't go under spec and I still have 30 thousands to, to play with so I'm in good shape with this rotor. Okay so while the rotors are machining one of the things you can do is you can pull your, your pins out like so and you can lubricate them. So what we use is uh, it's called seal glide which is a special lubricant designed just for brakes and it's, like, it's made out of silicone based and it um, it doesn't um, doesn't break down with heat so you, you're gonna put the uh, pull the slides out like so and put a little lube on them and work the lube around with your fingers maybe a little bit like, like so and uh, so we're gonna do that and um, one of the other things uh, our brake kit came with a new hardware kit so we're gonna change up the hardware that's on these so we'll, we'll pop these off and also on the brake pads here we're gonna take them out of the bag here and uh, open them up and um, and uh, these came these came with, with like, they came with the shims so we're not going to reuse the shims some of them do not come with shims and you would you would transfer the shims from the uh, old pads over but in this case they came with new ones so we're going to use the new so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this seal glide and on the back side of the on the back side of the pads, we're going to put a thin layer of, a, of a grease, and that helps reduce reduce friction and reduce sweeps. So now that I got my pad unpackaged here, I got and I so I put the little thin layer of the grease on the on the. You don't need a lot, just a thin layer. And um, on the inside pads, they have the the wear indicators. So these little these little indicators right here. So as the rotors it touches the rotors itself. And it causes them to uh, squeak, so that's how the customer or the driver knows to bring the car in for service. So anyway, so you got to pay attention to the, uh, the on the on the left and right pads. They uh, they go in a certain way. So I'm on the right side of the vehicle, passenger side. So this is this will be the passenger side inner pad. This will be the driver side inner pad, and then the outer pads are the same. So just be cognizant of that. And um, and now that we got the um, Slide pins for, uh, cleaned up. Now we're going to transfer over our, um, our brake hardware. So we'll just pop these off with a little, little flat blade screwdriver and just pop them off. So on the brake hardware, I, I popped this one off the top and I set it up on one side and this one off the bottom. And I set it over here and you got to match up the uh, the new hardware because there is a left and a right side for it. So, so what I 
I like to do is just take the one at a time off, and then and then you can just transfer it over, and they just press on. Just get on the grooves, line them up with the grooves, and press them on. And there's a tip for you is when you're handling the brake pads after you, you don't want to get any grease or fingerprints or anything on the uh, surface of the brake pads itself. And also when you're fresh in the machine rotors, you don't want to get any um, any grease or fingerprints on it. That, um, if you get the grease or fingerprints on it, it's, there's a high probability of um, developing a squeak. A cool little tip for you, see I'm machining these rotors and you hear the squeak is if you take an old brake uh, with an edge weight like this and put it behind the edge of the chip uh, and put a little press on it it'll take the vibration and squeak out and it'll find something in the way I see but you do have to be careful because there's moving parts and if you slip it's really easy to uh, get your hand caught in there so do this with caution okay now that we got our rotors all machined we're about ready to go back together so what you want to do is you want to line, make sure you line your your screw hole back up with the proper one and now is the time to check the emergency brake adjustment so you want to spin it and feel it and as you can tell this one seems to be a little loose so what we're going to have to do is adjust it up a little bit now is the time to do it so we'll pop out the rubber plug and we'll adjust the brake okay so now you rotate the drum or the rotor until you can see through the uh, the hole and you can actually see the adjustment spoon in there you're going to use a flat blade screwdriver and you're going to adjust it Trying, trying that, and you're gonna some you can flip those things around so if somebody's done them before or whatever it may be in backwards or whatever so to know which way to rotate it is really difficult so you just rotate it and if it feels like it's loosening it you go the other way and you go until it gets really snug and tight and then what you do is you unadjust it and back it off a little bit and that's how you adjust the rear brakes emergency brakes on the uh, on these so you're gonna adjust like so I also wanted to mention you can go ahead and put your screw back in and hold it flush. So when you adjust it, you get a nice everything's flush and you get a nice even adjustment. So I adjusted it to where I can't I can't even move it at all, barely. I mean it's like and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unadjust it the opposite way. A couple clicks, and then you should be able to turn it. And you'll feel just a light drag is all you need. You don't want to over tighten these. Okay, so now we're about to put this. The caliper cage back on but before I do on the actual from the bolts it comes with I put a little blue Loctite or what they call a thread sealer and this one's made by Permex and, um, and anyways uh, it's 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 like a little glue like you put on the threads and it what it is is it helps prevent these bolts from backing vibrating loose uh, under because uh, the brakes get hot and cold and they expand and contract and stuff so these bolts can loosen up and back up back out over time so this helps prevent that from happening so if you're doing this I recommend using the blue Loctite threads so after putting the caliper cage back on and Loctite on the bolts tighten the bolts down so um, just these bolts can go pretty tight you know, uh, really put some low eve on it now these these bolts up here are the, cal the actual caliper bolts that, uh, that you put in they you don't need them super super tight but we will put a little blue Loctite on these also and um, next is we're going to put the brake pads on themselves on. So like I said, there's a left and right, so you want to match it up with the old ones. Also on the brake pad, you can put a little bit of this lube on the slot, on the parts where it makes contact. But just real thin, you don't want a lot of grease on it because you don't want it to build up. If it, if it builds up, it, uh, it'll collect dirt and also prevent it make it stick, possibly stick in the slides. So when you're tightening these bolts, you got to back it up with a 17 wrench and tighten the inner one with a 12 millimeter. And, and um, so you gotta hold this one still because it'll try to spin on you and it won't be fully tight if you don't do that. So hold the back one up and uh, tighten this. All right, and that pretty much completes the brake job. The only other thing you're gonna do is pump your brake pedal before you uh, test drive it and also check your master cylinder and make sure it's not uh, over full. If it is a little bit over full, whatever, uh, go ahead and suck a little bit out, remove some. And uh, put your wheels on, torque them, torque them down. And um, I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. I'm Brian Essex from How To Automotive. And if you uh, have any questions, leave comments below. And I, I do respond. And I um, encourage you to subscribe and uh, for more tips and videos like this. And uh, thank you again.